Hey everyone, as promised, I am back here with more. If you want even more stuff than you're going to find on YouTube, make sure to hit the link below, head on over to my Patreon. For just five bucks a month, you're going to get some bonus lessons. You're going to get behind the scenes look at my creative process in terms of writing, a lot of gear stuff over there too, and just a really fun hang. So if you uh, feel so inclined, check it out and we'll have a good time over there. But back today, and I want to talk a bit about rhythm and time. Because of everything that I had to work on in my own playing, this was probably the biggest thing. And I trace it back to, to how I started. So my earliest musical exposure was playing classical violin as a kid. I started at three, four years old. My dad was uh, my dad was a violinist. My mom had been a violinist too, so definitely ran in the family. But I was playing classical stuff. And while I was introduced to what a metronome was very early on, I never liked practicing with them. I thought they were kind of torture devices. And also, any of my early performing experience on the violin was either playing unaccompanied, at which point... Time doesn't matter as much. It still matters, but it's not as critical as if you're, you know, playing with a band or playing with a click. Or if I was playing someone else with someone else, it was either with a pianist who was accompanying me or maybe with my dad who, again, was accompanying me. And when you're playing with someone who their job is to accompany you, they're going to follow you. So even if your time's not great, you're going to be okay. Uh, aside from that, I mean, I played in a youth orchestra for a bit, learned to follow a conductor, did okay with that, but also had a whole section of other violinists. And when I started playing guitar, a lot of the rhythmic concepts that I understood well on the violin in terms of, you know, what different note values were and everything like that, I didn't make that immediate connection to how that all applied to, to the guitar where, of course, it does apply just as much. And, uh, you know, early on, I was learning a lot of songs from tabs. I was playing with some bands, but I, I always noticed that I had the same tendency as a lot of people, which was to rush. And never really worked with a metronome the right way. So the way that I'd work with a metronome way back is when I was 16, I wanted to play fast. I had the John Petrucci, you know, technique book. And I'd put a metronome on to 180, 200 BPM and just try to play, you know, 16th notes keeping up with it. And was I playing all that in time? Probably not. Was I playing all that cleanly? Probably not. And I think with a metronome, what you have to accept first and foremost is the metronome's always right. That's the thing that we always hate about metronomes, but it's also the thing that once you learn to accept it, makes metronomes so unbelievably useful. And the experience for me that really kicked my ass into working on time is I thought I had decent time, went and keep on turning the record that I did produced by Josh Smith. Uh, he kicked my ass on rhythm, and I mean... The, the guys that come to mind, at least in the blues world, of having just impeccable timing and feel, Josh and Kirk Fletcher. Those two guys, top of the heap of anyone out there right now, of just so tight playing rhythm, their lead playing so tight with it too. And, you know, hanging and talking with Josh, one of the things that he said is how much, you know, he'd sit with the metronome, just have the metronome clicking and play blues unaccompanied with it. So then you get in a studio situation or if you're playing with a band, instead of feeling like, oh, the drummer and bass player can keep time, I'll just let them kind of pull me along. Now you feel like you can keep time well. So I want to show you guys kind of what I started doing, how I started practicing with a metronome uh to really make some strides with it. So you'll notice I have headphones on so I can get this click in, in my ears and really lock in with it. But I've got a click here at 120 BPM. So it's just clicking there. The first thing I always say is you want to really try to feel and internalize that metronome. So I've always got something usually physical that's moving with it. And the first thing I'd be trying to do is can I just lock in with that metronome playing quarter notes, so don't even have to be playing chord, but just <laughs> a 
And if you feel like you're drifting a bit, that's something that you want to start with just working there. And then what I do a lot of is take 12 bar blues, play it with the metronome. And you can start off really basic. You can start off whole notes. So if I play 12 bar blues in A with a quick four, one, two, three, four. some feel Now, the next thing that I do after that is, okay, can I play lead on accompanied and still keep the time? So like if I'm coming in from the turnaround, to the end and I'll stop the click there but you get the idea where what I'm doing is starting super basic start just with chords start with can I play 12 bar blues with good good time then start to get a little feel in there and then start playing lead now what that also will help you work on as a byproduct is if you're trying to work on outlining chords outlining changes well there you go that's everything that you need for it when you don't have that backing track with you you just have the click i can't just play straight minor pentonic there pretending like i have a backing track i actually have to try to outline each chord as well which is great practice for that from there, you start getting used to, okay, how consistent can I be if we take away that click and we're just doing it fully unaccompanied? But this is something that's super, super useful to work on and just wanted to give you a taste of how I use a metronome to practice and how it's really helped me to be a better musician, better guitar player uh, all around. So subscribe and uh, make sure you like this video and I will be continuing to post more here on YouTube. Really appreciate your support. And once again, if you dig what you saw here, 